Welcome back to another Krabby Mondays video. This one is going to be about the Popo Matano Crab's journey in my fish room. The first few pictures I'm going to show you is of the first tank. I'm just going to go through each tank, talk a little bit about them, and show you pictures or sometimes video of the process that I took to set them up, or basically just, you know, show you each different enclosure I've kept them in to kind of give you an idea of what they've been through in my care. And five have malted so far. Four of them malted this past week. I'm filming this on Sunday, June 18th, the day before it's going out. I am actually sitting down. I am editing the vlog, or the video rather. This part's the vlog. But I am editing the vlog the day before it goes out. This is why I can't keep doing this because this may, like, this, if I'm not done by 8, I'm done. I have to be done because some of these videos take me to midnight to edit and I just cannot keep doing that daily, trying to maintain threads on PR Aquatics forms and everything else. I'm going to ramble here. Sorry for the notification. But I'm going to show you the first few pictures of the first tank I kept them in. I'm, after that, I'm just going to going to talk about it, film another vlog clip, talk about it, and tell you what the next clips are going to be about. So sit tight and stay tuned. Now just a few seconds ago, actually two seconds by the looks of it, I did mention one of them, I did mention five of them malted four in the past week. The first one, as you're about to see in the next four pictures, that one malted immediately when I put them in the tank. I did get a few pictures of it. I have not yet gotten video of the malting, of any of the malting. When I do, I will definitely show you guys so that you guys can enjoy that. But here's the four pictures of the malting, then I'll get into what this tank setup was about and, you know, just a little bit about it. Okay guys, welcome back to the clip. I'm, that setup was actually in this tank here. I'm not going to get any closer because I just want to be able to get out of here a lot quicker, but that tank is the one that I had the Popo Matano crabs in to begin with. It was supposed to just be a temporary setup and it was. I got them out within like a one or two weeks and I put them in this one. I put them in this one so that I could house them. Hopefully, I was thinking about egg crate. Well, at first, it was the blue containers that I got out of the Dollar Tree. And then, basically, I was like, well, they're climbing out of that, which I'll show you a clip after this. And I put them in the egg crate, which you can see the Tinkering Tuesday and the Krabby Monday video of them basically me making that and them climbing out of it. So I put all that walking energy into it. But back to this tank since that I might actually just edit that out and have it be a separate, you know, the first part of the the next part of the vlog, basically. But this tank these both were on the same pump and ugh, sorry for the glare, I'm trying to tap the screen so it isn't so glary. But basically I have a pump back there, you can't see it, but it's in the middle of the glare. Let's try to block that out. Yeah, that's still not really doing much. It is brightening up the camera though. But basically there's a pump back there that I was pumping air into both of these tanks. And it wouldn't work to pump them into both because I was planning on four in this one, four in that one. But it only pumped to this one, so I had a T-splitter on it. It only pumped to this one. So I decided this one's gonna be the tank I'm gonna put them in. I took the T-splitter off because there was no point in it. And that's basically what happened there. And now I'm going to basically edit this in and then show you the next two clips for those two tanks, which is just basically taken from the introduction to Krabby Mondays and the Krabby Monday video where they climbed through the egg crate dividers, which is so fantastic. But I love these crabs and my favorite pets and... I'm actually going to get back to that at the end of this video if I have time, so stay tuned. Great. This is what I'm talking about, people. 
I see, I thought these slits would not allow them to get out. And what happened? I got to like this one right here. I got to this one right here, and I just see the crab trying to climb out the bottom slit, and I'm like, really, you know, I'm watching you. Alright, these next few clips are going to be on the final area I have them in now. That's going to last them at least a month, and... Once they get moved, that will be like the final destination for what I'm doing with them as far as breeding and everything else. So sit tight once again and stay tuned. And I really need to stop trying to be so punny. I'm such a tryhard. It just... These next few photos in the video clip are going to be the four crabs that malted this past week and I'll tell you a little bit more about those malts when I film the last segment. What the fudge? Which one is the malt? I literally almost cannot tell. I think that one's the malt. I'll let you know when I post this on Instagram or YouTube. But that you can tell is a shadow of the last crab. This one almost looks like he duplicated himself with cloned or something. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to tell, but the part of the photo that's exactly in the center, right above the branch, is where the malt is. The bottom is the crab. Above the malt is a triangle of Indian almond leaf that the crab has not eaten, I don't think, to this day. This is the tank that the crabs are going to be in for at least a month. It's been maybe a week, maybe two since I put them in here. That heater is take, keeping this tank around 27 Celsius, I think it is, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And this pump is pumping down this way. There's a pump right there. You kind of can see the white label there. It's pulling water from there and pushing it back along this back wall past the heater then this one is pulling it and again pushing it down this way the middle is like more of a stagnant zone but I did go ahead and drill these I wasn't going to but I kinda took an ice pick and poked it through while the crabs were still in there and I managed not to poke any crabs do not try that at home though because I don't want you accidentally stabbing your pet crabs so 
but these are the crabs I have. This is the biggest one. Sorry about the upward angle on the camera. But this is the biggest one. I'm not sure if you can see. You can kind of see the leg right there. But I just went over with my finger. Kind of see the other one. It's not showing up very well on camera. But that's the first one. This is the second one. Or well, this is number five because how it goes is not individual one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But I'm doing this way so that I can kind of show you the four that malted at the last, like the last little bit. But this one you're not gonna be able to see in at all, and I don't want to put like a flashlight or anything. But the crab typically hangs out right underneath this branch right here. Goes like that, you can barely make it out on camera. But that's where that one's at. I still have not labeled the tank, I still need to do that. I've trying to have been cleaning this, trying to get tanks organized and stuff so I can take proper care of my animals. The crab's right there. Again, it's right in the shadow. That's the Indian almond leaf. I put one in each tank. I think this one actually ate his. Yeah, this one ate his. You can't see it on video. This one ate his. This one ate his. And I don't know if the rest ate theirs. But this one obviously did not. Again, this one's number two that I'm closing up now. I'll show you number five, number six next. This number six. Again, you won't be able to see them. Not just because of the darkness, though. There's also... He likes hiding right underneath the stump of this driftwood that's, like, right there. So, I even if he could really try to see him, he still wouldn't really be able to see him. You know what? Let there be light. Let me put a lamp up here so you guys can actually see the crabs. How about that? Hey. Okay. So let's open this one back up. Let's actually go with number one. See, there's number one right there. Boop. That's number one. I'm going to go ahead and order in the numbers just so that I can kind of keep it straight in my mind. This one's number two. You can kind of see them right there. And now because I want to make it convoluted and actually I want to make the molts easier to talk about, I'm going to go ahead with number five back here. You can almost kind of see him right there, his legs sticking out. I do check these every day. I don't typically check them on Sundays. But given I'm filming a video for YouTube, I kind of have to, I mean, I kind of, you know, have to show you guys because it's not fair if I don't. You can kind of see him again. He's kind of hiding right down there. Kind of see his leg. Now for the fold that malted, I'm going to try to remember by memory, recite by memory, how big these Azuvias were. And I'm going to show you an Azuvia when I get to number 8, which I'm going to get to last. But this one's number 7. You can see him right there. When this one malted, I measured its Azuvia, which is the shed exoskeleton. This one was 16 millimeters in width, and each time they molt, they grow. So now he's a little bit bigger. I'm not sure by how much. That's why I'm measuring the Azuvias to see the shed exoskeletons to see how much they grow per molt to estimate how long it would take a crab to grow to full size once I figure out what is full size for these crabs. This one. You can see it right down there. This one's Azuvia was 11 millimeters, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. So that one's a little bit bigger now. And at 11 millimeters, you can't really tell the sets. That's kind of a juvenile. Nope. Number four, I'm going to show you now. 
can definitely see them like right there. You can kind of see how the legs are more brown. And I mean, just going back to this one even, let's go ahead and open this one back up real quick. You can see that his legs are more like, they're more dark purple like the rest of his body. So, I mean, I'm not sure if it's like adult coloration or what. But it definitely is intriguing why his legs are going more brown now. But that's interesting because all the pic- like many of the pictures you see are brown grab with like a purple back. And when I got these they were all completely dark purple. So I was like a little bit confused about that but it seems like it may just be the adult coloration that they were showing. And then this one has the Zuvia still in it. That's the that's the Zuvia, that's a shed exoskeleton. That's actually where the crab was in the picture that you saw, the last picture I showed. This is number eight. That Azuvia was 18 millimeters, same as this one's. And given they both malted like literally two days apart, and they had basically the same measurement on the shed exoskeleton, I'm suspecting these two, number four and number eight, are from the same generation. They may not be siblings, I still have to breed them to test that hypothesis and to see if that's even a possibility. But two days apart, that might be eliminating it for siblings, it might not. But they were both the same size, so it seems like they are actually the same generation. So I'm not going to be breeding these two together. That one, I think, is a male. This one, I suspect, is a female because of the underside of the crab. The Azuvia, actually. I looked at the Azuvia, and this one shows signs of being a female. Now, I don't know if, like, I don't think she's ready to breed at this point. If she is, then that's too bad because I'm not going to. This one, I think he would, I think it was a male based on the Azuvia. But, again, I'm not, I'm not sure if he's ready to breed because I'm not willing to take the crab out. Given the number eight just malted yesterday, I'm really not, like, I'm really super not comfortable with trying to take any of them out or anything. I'm trying to put the light back down on the immersed growth bin. But number eight just malted yesterday, so I'm not gonna be picking her up anytime soon. I did take out number seven because I was the one that malted the same day as number four. And again, number four was like 11 millimeters. Excuse me, number 7 was 16, if I'm remembering correctly offhand. So, I'm just trying to figure out what their breeding process is, and basically how I would figure that out is breeding them, raising the crablets, and seeing how, like, how the siblings malt from one another like basically if they all malt on the same day and that's how you know the siblings if siblings malt two or three days apart sometimes if it's dependent on food if it's dependent on temp if it's like there's a lot of things i want to test with the crabs not just these but vampire crabs mandarin crabs panther crabs all different types of freshwater crabs even brackish water crabs like red clawed crabs when they come out of the water there's also bait tick crabs and then the saltwater crabs like the saltwater pom-pom crab which is not to be confused with the freshwater pom-pom crab yeah and that kind of brings me to my last point i'd like to mention i'm super into crabs there's never a dull moment with these guys there never has been they haven't died yet that would be like the only dull moment there would be there's been full successful molts and i just I am a Christian and I thank the Lord for that because honestly that shows that they were taken good care of or they were recently collected from the wild. I don't know which it is. I really like, I don't know, like I care because these are all probably wild caught. I don't know of anyone who's culturing these crabs. I want to and my whole goal with this fish room which is soon to become a crab room actually because of all of those shrimp tanks will probably become crab tanks. Except a few, I might put the different shrimps in that 
a quarter got offers for the breeding colony, like 20 shrimp, 15 females, 5 males guaranteed. I might do that. I'm kind of iffy on that though because I really love crabs and I'm really into crabs. I won't only keep crabs, I will keep some fish, like some a pistagrama and some live barrows and stuff like that, but most of my hobby and most of what I'm going to be specializing as a business with green aquatics is crabs because not a lot of people know about them. Few actually can breed them and if I can breed them on a commercial scale I might be the first person to do that, the first company to do that if you think of me as like the face of my company but I'm super stoked for these crabs. I'm super stoked to just keep keeping them and eventually bringing them to adulthood where they are mature and they can breed and then just have lots of little baby crablets running around. I will show you this real quick. I am working on getting these guys. These like, I want to try to like have them going back like this. This is like level with the cinder block right there. So I am trying to get this set up so I can actually have an easier time. If they do breed, I probably just put them above them or whatever. Like I don't exactly know why I'm doing this. I'm just doing it because it'll look a lot nicer and it'll allow me to keep a few more tin gallons on here. And a lot more is actually changing in my fish room. I'm actually working on a top secret project that I will not tell anybody about. No one knows the exact all the details except me and God. So it's something never before seen. I can almost guarantee that. I have not actually checked into that too much. But I haven't seen it anywhere, and I've researched this topic that I'm doing extensively because I'm the type of guy who researches almost everything he does, so I don't care what I keep. I'm glad I have not killed any form of Matano crabs because there's not a lot of info. I got most of mine from aquatic arts, but I did research the panther crab extensively, which comes from the same lake system as these purple Matano crabs, so I think I'm in pretty good condition to keep them. But a lot of people just keep them because they want to keep them and they don't research them like I do. And I'm not trying to hop on those guys. To each their own. I'm just the type of guy where I research something for six months. If I really want to breed it and it's not available. If it's available, I may research for like three minutes. <laughs> I'll be I'll be straight up honest. I've done that sometimes. Oh, what's this type of moss? Look it up on Google. Oh, I know how to keep that. And yeah. But I'll step rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a kind of long video considering I showed all of my crabs and I talked for like probably five minutes now. I'm going to just randomly guess out of the blue. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys subscribe for more videos. This week will be the regular seven days a week. Then starting next week it will be Crabby Mondays, Tinkering Tuesdays, Saturday specials, and occasionally a fitness workout update that's not water themed it's actually what I'm doing to stay fit because seven days a week is difficult for me I sometimes stay up till midnight editing videos and I don't know if you can tell but I am almost falling asleep right now I'm that tired I've got that much sleep I have that much of a sleep routine I'm trying to get in one I've been doing good the past two days so I hope you guys support me in decreasing my content from seven days a week to three Maybe for every, you know, three three days a week, maybe once a month, four days a week. So I hope you guys don't mind. I'm not wanting to do any more watery Wednesdays except this Wednesday until I get the submarine done with the Tinkering Tuesdays because I just think that'd be so much more fun and so much better. And maybe I'll have something with these guys actually set up in 10 gallons or something I don't know like I'm not I'm planning on actually getting like a beta tank where it's like divide and not like a one gallon beta tank but like they have like a 60 gallon tank that has five dividers and it's really cool I'll tell you guys more about that because this is getting awfully long so I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys joined me for the crab fam I think that's what I'm gonna call my subscribers now the crab fam because Saturday specials I may update you on the fish and the shrimp but other than that you're not gonna get an update on those guys unfortunately it's not that I don't enjoy keeping them. I do. I thoroughly enjoy keeping shrimps and fish. But the crabs are really the mainstay in my favorites list. And they've always been there. I haven't been able to keep them. And now that I am, I'm really excited. So I hope you guys join me and join the crab fan by subscribing. 
and go ahead and hit the like button, share this if you really enjoyed it and you really want someone to, like, I don't know, just see how I've kept the Pokemon Tonic Crabs. I do not recommend keeping them like I initially did, that was just a temporary setup. I'm talking kind of fast because I want to get this video out and not have it take 30 minutes of you guys' time. So I hope you guys don't mind, but don't keep them in a 29, which is the shipping cups or whatever. Keep them in something like this, you know, keep them in a 10 gallon. Put a piece of driftwood in there, you know, something kind of like that. Put something like that or something like that in there. Keep them in something like that. Give them enough room to roam around. Be sure to keep a lid on it. That's why I have these blue sticky saran wrap because I don't want them to climb out. I don't want them, you know, like the one I thought actually did climb <laughs> into another thing, but it was just as malt. I don't want them to kill each other. They all supposed to be aggressive and territorial. I will figure that out eventually once they breed. And I don't mind them killing each other so much. But as of now, peace out, crab fan. I will update you on all of my research, all of my stuff as it comes out, as I feel comfortable sharing. Because I, as I said, I, I've researched panther crab six months while they were unavailable, and I don't want to share stuff that's not true. So I hope you guys appreciate me trying to figure out how to keep these, figure out how to get them to breed, and I'm probably not going to share that because obviously I want to be able to be the only one breeding them for a very long time. Not that I want all of your money, but I need some money and I don't monetize these videos anymore because I don't want to be money hungry. So I hope you guys enjoyed and my shoulder's really holding at this point. So peace out crab fam, love you long time, be sure to subscribe so you can join the crab fam.